One of the things that attracts me to this hobby is the element of unpredictability. We all know the feeling, the rush experienced when trying something new for the first time, not knowing what to expect. A perfect example of this would be the first time I ever tried Keist from Slumber House. I'd heard the stories passed down through the grapevine and of course formed an image in my mind of what my experience would be like. But upon first sniff, my preconceived notion was subsequently shattered as I was truly thrown for a loop. There are few things that have ever simultaneously stimulated and challenged my senses all at once, and smelling keist for the first time would be one of them. I feel as though the mesmerizing deep amber hue of the elixir contained within the bottle ties in directly with what this scent is, uh, is trying to go for. Rich, robust, mysterious, and comforting. These are all adjectives that I would use to describe Keese, both from a presentation and from a scent standpoint. So Keese introduces itself like the most beautiful and radiant sunset you have ever seen. It's late August on a quaint farmhouse deep in southern Georgia, the heavy summer heat still lingering as thoughts and anticipation of the autumn to come intensify. The sultry aroma of golden peaches warmed by the sun permeates the air, intermingling with the fragrant pleasures of a freshly poured scotch whiskey. This is what comes to mind when I smell the opening of Keist, the picture it paints in my mind, as stunningly beautiful as a sunset which bathes the entire sky in golden orange light, yet as powerful as mighty waves pounding against the cliffside. The opening truly captivates me each and every single time, and it keeps me coming back for more. The brilliant, mouth-watering, bourbon-soaked peach quickly fades away, however, and is replaced with a stunning, honeyed tobacco. Or rather, the honey itself actually replaces the sweetness that comes from the peach and the bourbon in the opening, and the tobacco provides a much-needed balance here. This tobacco accord is quite possibly the most challenging aspect of Keist for me personally, as it is also combined with a heather accord, creating a tobacco that is dry, dusty, uh, dirty, and rugged all at the same time. The level of complexity that is utilized here just by this single note alone is mind-blowing to me. It adds the definitive hard-hitting and somewhat strange punch that this composition needs. Lastly, Keist fades out with a mixture of earthy patchouli and subtle tonka bean, giving the finish here a very nice, refined, smooth, and creamy texture. Keist is for the brave of nose. It's undoubtedly a masterfully blended piece of work right here, which tells a story in a way that is completely unique, and I've never quite seen this before in the industry. As far as performance goes, less is more. The performance on this is absolutely outstanding. Longevity can be upwards of 15 hours at times. I've had it last almost a full day on skin. And the projection and sillage are just absolutely room filling. I would say spray this one with caution. And you know, subsequently, due to this extreme ferocity of the performance department, uh, the application is definitely going to be limited. I go for Keist almost exclusively for outdoor occasions, usually more on the casual side. Winter's a chill in the air. you got to give this one some room to breathe, in my opinion. So this one perfectly is uh, suitable for those casual situations in late autumn or winter, but particularly in the end of fall, because this one, to me, smells very autumnal. I'm just going to straight up say it. Not everybody is going to like or even understand this, partly due to the fact that I'd argue that this doesn't even really smell like a fragrance that necessarily to be worn on a person, but rather kind of captures the atmosphere and the essence of a particular time and place. At the end of it all, Keith takes the wear on a thrilling and unexpected olfactive adventure. Just be careful, because it's a one-way ticket.